All right, so it's been a rough couple of weeks, but I did get some reading done. One of the audiobooks that I listened to and finished was this book, Hamnet, by Maggie O'Farrell. I know that this this book has been getting some attention in terms of awards and things like that. And I was just piqued by the concept. It's essentially a book that focuses on Shakespeare's family. And I know there's a few other books like this that focus on Anne Hathaway, Shakespeare's wife. But this one kind of looks at not just Anne, but also the other family members, specifically the children. Um, as you can see, the title is about Hamnet, although he's not really discussed in psychological detail as much as Anne is, although a lot of the book does focus and revolve around his death, you know, making the connections between Hamnet's death and then the eventual writing of Hamlet the play. I think that was a really interesting way to structure the story. And I think, honestly, I think the ending was a really good payoff. So I think this book is definitely worth it if you're interested in Shakespeare, Shakespeare's life and his works. I wouldn't say it's like an amazing feat of literary accomplishment, but you know, it's, the language is poetic. It's well written. I think she does a really good job of developing Anne Hathaway's character. The next thing that I read was this memoir called Half a Life. And I read this on my iPad. Um, it's a book by this author, Darren Strauss, who is one of the professors at the NYU MFA program, which is the reason why I wanted to, uh, to just do some research on his type of writing. Uh, it's very short and very captivating. It's about how Darren Strauss, when he was in high school, while he was driving, he hit and killed another high schooler and how that trauma of killing that person and then having to do deal with the social and legal implications of that accident, how that affected his life, and how that leads up to his eventual writing of this book. I just think the way he struck, it's very fragmented, you know, the chapters are very short, uh, there's a lot of white space kind of showing how that force of the trauma really affects his memories of the incident, and it really goes a lot into how the source of a lot of honest writing, especially memoir writing, nonfiction writing comes from these traumatic instances when we're younger. So I think it's a really interesting book. The next book I read was Vesper Flights. I was really excited to read this one by Helen McDonald, who wrote H is for Hawk, a book that I really enjoyed. Um, this book is a collection of essays. Many of them are uh, nature writing essays. Um, and she does a really good job of that. A lot of her writing is clearly influenced by uh, Annie Dillard, um, you know, kind of reflecting on the sublime of biology and of nature. A lot of commentary on climate change that I think is really important. You know, objectively, this book is probably too long, and many of the essays are a little bit too uh, self-indulgent, but, you know, I love Helen McDonald's writing style. I wouldn't say there is as much existential angst in this book, more so just kind of despair about just the general state of the world vis-a-vis -vis climate change. So I do think it can drag on, and if I were you, picking up this book, I would just kind of flip through the essays and just kind of pick up the ones that are interesting to you. I think this is how Helen McDonald would have wanted her book to be read. In her introduction, she describes the essays as kind of this kind of just collection of, of just interesting objects. So so I wouldn't feel too committed to reading this one front to back. So this is an audiobook that I'm listening to currently called The Impeachers. Um, it's by Brenda Wineapple, who is a teacher at the New School whose MFA program I'm also applying to. I just wanted to get an idea of her writing, which seems to be very focused on historical fiction. I know she's written a lot about biographies of Emily Dickinson um, and other writers. This book called The Impeachers is about the impeachment of Andrew Johnson in the 1800s, which I think is extremely relevant to what's going on right now. And I kind of wish I had listened to this a year earlier uh, when Trump was getting impeached. But I think she captures a lot of the anxieties and a lot of the political doubt that went into this process, which I think is going to be always relevant to our American, current American situation. Um, I will say this book is extremely long, extremely hard to get into unless you're really into like the psychological details of all the different politicians. Unfortunately though, I'm just not that interested in learning about the lives of, you know, these some of these politicians who I've never heard of before. I think she does a good job of teaching how reconstruction was at the heart of this process and how that kind of affected the different politicians who are either pro-slavery, anti-slavery. If anything, it's a good history lesson. And I also tried to read this book by Darren Strauss. This is a work of fiction called The Queen of Tuesday. It's about a movie star named Lucille Ball. Um, honestly, I read about 20 pages of it and then I just had to put it down because it was kind of boring. <laughs> uh, my tolerance for reading books about extremely wealthy white people is very low. You have to do a lot to get my interest. For Darren Strauss, I think I'll read any of his future nonfiction, but fiction 
probably not going to be that interested in. Uh, I actually just finished this nonfiction book called On Vanishing. This is written by uh, Lynn Harper, who is, I believe, a chaplain. And in this book, she works at various nursing homes, uh, working as a chaplain for people who are in memory care, which is essentially for people with dementia, you know, mild cognitive impairment, um, people who are lo losing their memory and their executive function. This author does a really good job of approaching the topic of dementia and stigma against dementia in a new way. I think that a lot of these kinds of books can be kind of tedious and that they always kind of say the same things about how dementia affects your identity. I think Lynn Harvard does a really good job of incorporating literature as well as a little bit of philosophy and a little bit of art and very specifically doing a good job of incorporating personal stories um, and her relationships with the nursing home residents who have dementia. I think she does in a really insightful way and she and she actually works pretty hard to incorporate new insight um, into the discussion about dementia. What I think is really what I think what adds a really interesting dimension to this is she has done her own research on her own you know genetic history, finding out that both her parents have the APOE4 allele, which you know, gives her a 25% chance of being a homozygous for APOE4, which is associated with extremely increased chance of developing Alzheimer's. So she has this really interesting way where she views her life as inevitably le leading up to dementia. She talks about how she will, about when she will develop dementia rather than if she will develop dementia, which I think is a really interesting you know, and in some ways depressing way to view your life. I think she has a lot of insight into the existential implications of living your life that way that I think makes this book extremely worth uh, reading no matter how old you are. Okay, so some physical books that I read, I actually went through the Shakespeare play As You Like It. I haven't read a lot of the comedies and this is one that I wanted to tackle. It's kind of hard to describe what this is about. Essentially there's this duke who gets expelled to a forest somewhere. These two women who are related to the current duke who is in power go off into the forest and they meet a bunch of people and there's shenanigans where the two women are both disguised as men and there's love triangles and very hard to describe. There are just some very beautiful monologues uh, in this play uh, about aging, about dying, about acting that are really quite profound and add a lot to this play. Um, I don't think it's the most easy to read. Uh, there's a lot of songs, there's a lot of uh, jokes that modern readers probably won't get, but I think if you watch a performance, it's gotta be pretty entertaining. I think out of the comedies that I've read, probably one of the ones that I enjoyed the most. Uh, usually I like to take on reading projects where I am reading shorter works, but also trying to take on a longer work. So I bought this edition of William Bullman's Fathers and Crows from a used bookstore, and it is a book that I believe is almost a thousand pages. It's about the discovery of Canada by the French, about Champlain and all these figures in Canadian history that I used to learn about in elementary school and their interactions with the First Nations people of Eastern Canada. I'm only a hundred pages in. Now, Bullman's writing style is very quirky. I wouldn't say it's it's necessarily good or or something that's captivating, but you know the quirky the quirkiness of it so far has pulled me through, and I'm really interested to see the interactions between the Europeans and the First Nations people. Already, there's a little bit of action and violence going on, so I'm excited to keep on reading. Hopefully, I can finish this before the winter holidays. And just to show a little bit of the quirkiness of this, you know, he plays a lot with fonts, bolding. He even plays with font size, which I've never seen in a book before. He's got maps. He's got uh, hand-drawn images in here. He's definitely pushing the structure of the novel to its fullest. I don't know, I just thought it was really funny that he did this <laughs> really fancy letter T. It reminds me of that uh, Spongebob episode where he spends like a day and all he writes is the letter, is the letter T or the word the with a really fancy letter T. So yeah, those are all the books I read in the past two weeks. If you guys have any recommendations, please let me know. Um, if you've read any of these books and wanted to leave a comment, please feel free to do so. Um, yeah.